Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Um, happy Women's History Month. I'm just allowing folks in. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Polly Iringo. I'm the founder of Black Women Photographers, the global community and database of Black women and online photographers that I started last year in the midst of this pandemic. Um, and I'm so excited to have the one and only Tracy Woods with us today for our Q&A conversation series. Um, she is a wealth of knowledge and I'm just going to read her very humble bio <laughs> before I, you know, do the do the worst part of like not introducing her properly. Um, I'm going to just take it away from her bio um, before we get started. And I also want to say, you know, thank you to those who have, you know, shared questions ahead of time. That's great. This will be as conversation as possible. So if you have questions throughout, if you already have a question in mind, feel free to drop it in the chat. And as always, if you would like to drop in the chat where you're tuning in from, feel free to do that. Always love to see who is where and where um, people are tuning in from. So feel free to, you know, drop your name and your location in the chat as well. And if you have your cameras on, wonderful. You know, it's nice to see people's faces. If not, that's okay too. Uh, hey, Sherry's in DC. Hey, Tiffany in Baltimore. Bren in Oakland. Uh, Miriam in Nigeria, Shanitra always holding it down for Tampa. I love it. I love it. Chapel Hill, North Carolina, New York City, Oakland, Virginia. I love it. I love it. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Introduce Tracy. Tracy Woods is a creator at heart. Armed with over a decade of experience in photo shoot production, creative direction, and photo research, Woods most recently served as photo director at Essence Communications. As an artist and photographer, she draws inspiration from beauty in the unexpected. During summer 2020, her signature artwork adorned the windows of Macy's flagship stores in New York, San Francisco, and Chicago. An out-of-the-box thinker and astute problem solver, she has overseen projects ranging from celebrity, portrait and fashion and beauty to repertoire, to travel, food and lifestyle. Her client roster includes Revlon, uh, Oriel, General Mills, Verizon and more. And uh, additionally, she's conducted portfolio, re portfolio reviews, participated in panels and judge photography contests for a number of the industry's leading organizations, um, you know, to name, you know, Paul Springs Photos, Eddie Adams Workshop, New York Times Portfolio Review and others. Along with sharing her expertise as a workplace mentor with Big Brothers and Big Sisters of New York City, she has volunteered for First Take, the high school workshop sponsored by the New York Association of Black Journalists, and hosted the city, you know, and hosted by the City University of New York Graduate School of Journalism. Woods holds a Master of Fine Arts degree in photography from Pratt Institute and earned her Bachelor of Arts in Graphic Design from Rhode Island College. And she is a native of Providence and now calls Brooklyn, New York home. Thank you so much, Tracy. I know you left out so much of your bio. <laughs> it's like, where do you even begin? Um, so thank you again for joining us. And, you know, I want to first start off, you know, if you'd like, you know, to tell us where it all started, because one doesn't just wake up and become a photo director. So if you can, you know, share us, uh, share a little bit about I your did. background with us. Well, I want to first of all, thank you for having me. Um, like, I feel honored to speak to everyone here and hopefully just, you know, my story, my story can inspire someone else. Um, you know, as the bio said, I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island and I was always interested in art. I, I didn't really discover photography until my sophomore year of college. And I took my first photo class and just fell in love with it. Um, didn't really know what I was going to do with it, but I had a really great photography professor who kind of mentored me. And um, when I decided to go to grad school, he suggested Pratt and some other schools, came to New York. I was an artist. I wanted to be a fine art photographer. I didn't really know anything about commercial photographer, commercial photography, and really just even how to make a living out of it. And when you graduate from school, you know, as many of you know, you're like, I need a job. What am I going to do? I need to, I have student loans to pay back. Um, living in New York City, it's expensive to live here. And I started assisting. I just, let me kind of dip my toes into the commercial world. And I assisted a bunch of different types of photographers, 
thought I wanted to be a still life photographer. When I assisted a still life photographer, I realized I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, I think it was also the commercial end of it. I just didn't really, it wasn't in my soul. I didn't feel it. And I became a studio manager from one of the photographers that I assisted. He took me under, he needed someone to run a studio. I'm like, I could do that. Had no idea what it entailed, but I really learned the business side of photography and how to run a successful photography business by doing that. I'm dealing with his clients. He did mostly advertising work. Um, I started, you know, as I learned and progressed from there, I started producing his photo shoots. I started estimating, you know, I was the first line of contact with all his clients. I was dealing with the client. I was the face of that studio. Um, and it really kind of just opened my eyes to what was out there and how to just maneuver a business. And from there, I assisted some photo reps and really just even worked with different types of photographers. I um, learned marketing and uh, how to market yourself, how to speak to clients, how to kind of just even how to be on a job. Sometimes when you just start out, you think, you kind of think you know what you're doing, but you know, you I, I, I always fake it till you make it. <laughs> and kind of that's what I did, but learning all the way. From there, I could have went into more advertising or editorial. It was just, I didn't know which direction I wanted to go. And, and with all the contacts I had made over the years of assisting different types of photographers and also um, running a, biz, a successful photo studio, I took those contacts and um, just kind of headed out and started doing photo research. I worked with, you know, as I said, I worked with different reps. Photographers were hiring me to come in and do stuff in their studio. It was a jack of all trades. Um, I did a lot of photo research for different publications. And I did the uh, firmest travel guides. I did a lot of photo research for them. And then I ended up at Essence as a freelance position. It was really like, I was only supposed to be there for a month and it went on to be 13 years. <laughs> That is incredible. So for those who do not know what, you know, what is a photo researcher? Like, what does that even mean? So photo research is finding existing photograph uh, photo image, uh, existing photo, uh, photographs. So it could be a stock agency like Getty Images. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Getty. If not, they're the premier, like the largest agency in the world, I think. And um, it could be finding, depending on the type of publication, it could be finding images of celebrities out and about. It could be finding images for a beauty story with the, it's the latest makeup trends and you want to know, you know, everyone's wearing red lipstick this award season. So it's just gathering all those images. It could be what we call creative research where um, there's a story that's more conceptual or you have to come up with an idea to tell that story in pictures and to grab the viewer. So it could be like a story on breast cancer and how do you tell the same story year after year, you know, in October when it's breast cancer month, like you come up with unique ways to tell that story. So it's finding different imagery. Um, sometimes it's calling photographers who you know who've shot things. It could be um, like if I'm working on a travel piece and I need, you know, I have 10 travel locations that I have to find. And I know that, you know, photographer A has traveled a lot. I may call that photographer and say, hey, do you have images of these locations? They say yay yeah or nay. And then if we like the images and want to use them, we pay the photographers to license their images for, you know, the usage of, you know, whatever it's for. Thank you, thank you for explaining that. And so someone, would you recommend that that would be like then the first step 
in the process? Like if you, you know, eventually like the steps that you took that, you know, led you to Essence? Um, it was helpful for me. I think you have to have a good eye. And um, it also helps to, you kind of get acclimated to the many different types of photographers that are out there, the different agencies. It really is just building um, a wealth of knowledge. So it was a good step for me. Um, I think with my art background, that helped a lot too. I know a lot of people don't have an art background and some people don't even have, um, like I know I have a, a friend who didn't study photography, didn't study art, but she had a good eye. She knew what was good and what looked good. So she took those skills and just honed them and by doing photo research and then eventually starting to produce shoots. It just, if you have a good eye, that's kind of where the beginning of it. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and then talk to us, you know, about your journey at Essence. You said you, it happened like you were just there part time and then- yeah, I was a freelancer, <laughs> I came in, I was ending one freelance job and someone I knew had worked at Essence and uh, the person who, whose job that I took over was moving to California. She gave her notice and they were, what are we gonna do? We need someone right away. And she's like, well, I have someone, you know, you could meet her. And she called me and I said, well, my job just ended. Yeah, I'll come in. I met her bosses. They liked me. Someone else recommended me to her boss. And then they were like, okay, we need you freelance. We don't know what we're gonna do with the position. They were at a hiring freeze at that time. Um, this was probably like in the like 2007 and at that time publications were going through kind of an overhaul everybody was downsizing all the big publishing houses were downsizing jobs were kind of being eliminated like when once you had a large department now you went from five photo editors you went to four and every year it went down and down so she's like we need somebody but we don't know if we're going to have a job i said okay you know and i was used to freelancing i went from one thing to the other so that was no problem they liked me and a few months after maybe about two or three months of me being there they kept extending it and she said well I may be, I, we like you, we want you to stay, but I don't have a job to offer right now. And I may not be able to hire you for another three or four months. And I said, well, okay, just kind of let me know. But at the same time, because I don't know what's going to happen, I'm still looking for other, lining up other freelance work, just like any, you know, many of you do, you just you can't rely on that one thing. If you're a freelancer, I just have to have things lined up. So I probably went full time. I started in February and I went full time in September. Thank you. Um, and while you're there, can you talk to us about then the different roles you've had um, and what that experience was like for you? So I came in as an associate photo editor. Um, and worked on, and you know, as a freelance, actually, let me paraphrase it. As a freelancer, you kind of, I'm a freelancer, I'll do whatever you want to do. You know, I don't have a say, oh, I don't do this, I don't do that. No, you just do, I'm a freelancer, use me, that's what I'm here for. So I did a lot of photo research, I did what they call a magazines divided into like sections of a book. So there's the front of book, which is kind of um, department pages, I mean, beauty, fashion, um, whatever sections of the magazine there are. Then there's what they call the well or center of the book, which is the bigger feature stories and maybe your cover story or longer form stories. And then the back of the book is kind of the, the rest of the book where there may be some department pages and like smaller pages. So I worked on a lot of front of the book and back of the book, the smaller stories like the, that the boss didn't really wanna do. You know, I'm there, that's what I did. So I kind of worked on every section of that magazine at one time, you know, since my time there. And then well, 
afterwards, you soon became the photo director, right? Well, that was a long time. That was years <laughs> and years of being there and just getting more responsibility and doing, um, it was a long time coming. And also the department also kept getting smaller and smaller. We had, you know, at one time there were five photo people in the department, then every year it was less and less, you know, more less and less people. So um, when it came time for me, like just to shine and kind of be the boss, that's when I started doing the larger stories, you know, was working more on the cover. I may have done a few cover things before that or helped produce, you know, where, you know, my former bosses would need help because everyone pitched in and helped each other. Um, then I started doing the covers and the bigger stories like that. Um, got one submitted question. Um, Candace asks, how do you break into, you know, the industry with no quote unquote professional background in photography? In terms of being a photographer or a photo editor? Candace, I don't know if you want to mute or drop in the chat, you know, where exactly you were um, coming from with that question. Um, in terms of like a photographer, videographer, that kind of image. Maker. Oh, I, in, in terms of being a photographer, I don't, you don't have to have experience being um, like a professional shooter. You have to have talent and drive. So if you have the talent and drive and you keep just building up your craft, that's kind of how you break in to me. It's like getting the talents there. Now it's building up a portfolio so that um, you can hopefully share it with other people and start getting work. So wherever, no matter where you live in the country or the world, um, you know, there's jobs, people need photographers to do stuff. And it depends on what type of photography you are. If you're, you know, you could be a wedding photographer, you could be a family portrait photographer, you could be, you know, editorial, commercial. There's so many different types of photography that's needed out there. So I would just start with where you are, keep building up your craft, keep shooting. And one, if you keep shooting and seeing how your work evolves, you start seeing things differently. You start seeing, um, the types of photographs that you're sh you're sharing you're shooting and sharing um, will eventually change with you know just I guess with technique not even technique like just keep shooting I know a lot of photographers who did not study photography who are shooting commercially now and also if there's photographers in your area assist you learn a lot from assisting different types of photographers. You could be a fashion photographer who assisted a still life photographer because still life is so technical. You pick up a lot of those nuances of the still life world that you can use in your fashion world. Thank you so much. Um, can you talk more about your experience as a photo editor slash photo director? You know, what does that even like entail? Um, you know, I'm sure most folks assume that you are the one who has the, all the decision in hiring, but what is that process really like? No, it's a team. It's a team effort. Um, I work with um, the editors and I work for the editor in chief, like the boss, the head of the magazine. Um, each magazine is going to be slightly different, like in terms of how their working procedures are, but it's usually a team effort. Um, it's, you know, sometimes I'll have a fashion editor who wants to work with a particular photographer because, you know, they've worked on something outside of work or they know that photographer or they met that photographer. And um, so I have to weigh that. And um, I have to weigh with what my boss wants. You know, sometimes, especially if it's a cover shoot, um, there's a lot more layers involved in that. So um, I wish I had the final say for everything. Sometimes, you know, the images that I want chosen sometimes don't get chosen. You know, I may get overrided, but it's a conversation and it really is a collaboration. Thank you. And, you know, when you are, you know, the one able to hire, what are things that you look for in particular uh, or what you looked for in the past, you know, when you are trying to find a photographer? 
I look at um, I look at consistency. I want to make sure that when I look at someone's portfolio or website, I want to make sure that they're consistent in what they're doing, that it's not just a fluke. I look at um, their lighting, but I also look at how they see and what they see. I look at personal work a lot because it tells me, you know, I can see what you shot for a client. That's great. But how do you think as a photographer? What are, you, are, what are your interests? What are you looking at? Um, so I look at all of that. And then also I look at, um, I tr you know, when I was working full time or freelance for a client where I was doing a lot of hiring, I try to meet photographers, um, look at their portfolio, because a lot of times it's personality, it's how you gel with someone. You want to, especially if I'm not on um, set with someone, I want to make sure they can deliver to me. Like it's consistent and they can deliver. Thank you. Um, I want to transition real quick to talking about what it is like to be on set. Uh, in your interview with the Lupe, you mentioned that this cover with Michelle Obama was your most one of your most federal uh, memorable moments, you know, and you also mentioned that you only had like about 20 minutes to 30 minutes with uh, the former first lady, you know, what is it really like on set with these covers I know for myself. I've been seeing all those conversations with like previous covers I won't mention names um, and people just don't know what it really is like you know you may only have 20 minutes to produce a cover shot. Do you mind talking to us about that process? Yeah, well, one of the, the reasons that was one of my favorite ones, it's Michelle Obama. And it's like, you're in awe, but it's also, this is my job. So I, there's a level of professionalism that you always have to have. Um, and there's a lot of pre-planning. So I may only have, you know, 20 minutes, which could be a long time for like, especially with the, someone of her statue. Like I know people who have photographed the former President um, Obama, who's who've had five or 10 minutes. So you, it's a lot of pre-planning involved. It, it may be, we have 20 minutes with her, but we're there three or four hours earlier setting up, scouting, and we're just waiting. You know, you're waiting for her to be ready because you may have, it, it may take a couple of hours to figure out what you're doing and to have set up so that when she comes to set, it's seamless. Like everything's been pre-lit and she's ready to go. Um, I think with, her, yeah, it was just her. It was just being, you know, in awe. Like you know, it was right after, I guess this was 2018. So she was no longer, they were no longer in office. And everyone on set who basically said, we miss you. We wish you were still the president <laughs> and the first lady. <laughs> And I even saw I saw your uh, photo with her, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I love it!" Um, and then talk to us about you know what because I I look at often like when I see a cover released, I often look at the credits and the team dynamic. Um, you know what does it take to like build that team? Um, because it obviously is the photographer, but there's all these different layers to it. Um, and how much of that do you outsource? So like if people wanted to, you know, probably, you know, get the chance to shoot a cover for like Essence or other places, you know, what are their likelihoods to even be, you know, considered if that makes sense? No, it makes sense. And I would always say there's always a chance to be considered because I find like now, especially now in the time that we're in, I see a lot of new and really exciting photography that's coming out there and people are shooting covers and high pride, hope high profile campaigns, not just covers. And I'm inspired that, you know, we're moving ahead. I think with everything that happened last year, um, people are taking notice and like, you know, not using the same people over and over again and really expanding on, you know, who is shooting what. Um, for a lot of times with covers, sometimes my like old editor in chief, would be, would want to use someone, depending on the story. She's like, oh, this is who I want to use for this. It's like, okay, that's what I have to go with. But then I would make recommendations. And as I started 
you know, I inherited the job from someone else. So as I started to try to make my own mark and like, well, let's introduce new photographers. And sometimes it's, you know, it's a process and you have to massage, you know, your bosses, but, you know, eventually it happens. Um, a lot of times with celebrity stuff, sometimes a celebrity may weigh in and, you know, um, they don't necessarily get to choose, but, you know, they may have a say in like, you know, can you not use that person? Because sometimes I don't know the backstory of why they don't want to use that person. It could be, you know, they had a bad experience or, you know, something like that. But it's, it's a lot of different layers. Um, and then in terms of the other parts of the team, anything with celebrity with like hair, makeup, it's usually you're using who they use. They have set people they use and, you know, they have their East Coast people, their West Coast people, and you, you don't have a say in that. You may have a say in someone who's new and, you know, I can make suggestions to people. Sometimes um, with styling, we would style in-house. We had an in-house um, fashion editor who styled. Uh, sometimes we had to outsource it really depended on um, what it was and you know who you were shooting what you were shooting um, I think uh, you know because there's a lot of different people involved not only there's you know hair makeup stylist there's set builders there's prop stylists so really i'm trying to network with all of these people so that i just know who's out there and what's who's doing what and who's doing work that i like but also you know who photographers are using sometimes a photographer has a relationship with um a set stylist that they gel well together and you want that look so that's where you go you know sometimes it's me you know, hey, this is who we like to use. So they'll go with who we want to use. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that process because sometimes it's, it's hard to know what's going on when you're not really inside. <laughs> so you don't understand like the different dynamics of it all. Um, you know, I see that we're already 30 minutes in. I can't believe it, you all. So if you already, if you don't have a question yet, you do have a question, drop it in the chat. We're already 30 minutes in our conversation and 30 minutes to go. So please do drop in your questions. I've already took a note of some that I've seen come in the chat and we'll be asking them shortly. Um, you mentioned already, you know, what you look for when, you know, for finding a photographer. If a photographer was to reach out, you know, what's the best way to do that? Is it like saying, hi, you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm Aspen here, I'm based in LA, here's my work. Um, what, what does it actually look like and how often, you know, I guess, do you use that source, like those sources when they do come in? Like how often do you actually utilize the people who have reached out? Oh, um, often. So I don't, I, I always say to people, you don't need something clever, witty. <laughs> like you said, you say, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm a LA-based photographer. This is the type of photography I do. Here's a link to my work. I would always embed a photo into your email because I've, I've gotten emails where it's just the message it's we're visuals you know we're all photographers there should be some type of visual there to help me identify you um you know i'll click on the link and i i want to tell people don't get discouraged because i know a lot of people um reach out to different people in hiring situations and they may not get back to you don't get discouraged it's everyone's doing like five or ten jobs now you know you may have like i said as I said earlier, where you had a team of like five people, then you went to, you know, down, down. Now it's one person doing the job that five people did. So um, it's not that they don't like the work. It's not that they're not, um, they, it's not that they don't want to work with you. It's just that everyone's just incredibly swamped. And when people would reach out to me, I would save all those emails and, you know, I had a little promo folder and I would go through them that because that's my job. Like you have to, as part of being a photo editor is just seeing who's out there. But um, I couldn't necessarily get back to everyone, but then somebody's email would come across my desk at the right time. Like, hey, I may have something for you and I really like your work. Um, let's set up a chat, a, a call so we can speak. 
Um, this pre-pandemic, I would have people, you know, come into wherever I was working and they would meet with me, like, and I would try to gather as much of the team possible so that everyone could meet with these artists. Um, since we're in a pandemic now, everything is Zoom and I've done, I've had um, people reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I really like your, I really like what you do and, you know, respect your opinion. Would you take, you know, a some time to meet with me? And I've done a few portfolio reviews that way where just someone came and I spent like, you know, 15 minutes to half hour just talking to them, reviewing their work and giving them some feedback. So um, I know a lot of people don't do that. It really just depends, but keep it simple, keep it short. It doesn't need to be fancy and really just put like your best image out there. Say, this is who I am and what I do. And then keep it up. Don't inundate someone with a lot of emails because then- That's what that I was going to ask next. <laughs> how, yeah, often yeah. Is, how often should one, you know, follow up? I always suggest following up like every six to eight weeks. So like maybe every six weeks, it's like every month and a half um, is a good trajectory, but also um, follow up when you have new work too. Because sometimes if you're sending the same stuff, then you're like, well, I've already seen this. Like, so if you shot a new project, whether it's personal or for a client, you can share that. Hey, I just shot, you know, this project for so-and-so, love to share it with you. Or I'm working on this personal project that's about this and you can share it with them. But I would say every six to eight weeks is a good trajectory. Thank you. Um, Layla in the chat asks, are there any, you know, email subject titles that have that you have been most impressed with when people reach out? Um, gosh, I don't remember offhand. I would probably say it's just hello. Um, there's been some, and I can't remember where it almost sounded like it's from a friend and it's a personal, and sometimes it like. I don't know, it could be off-putting a little bit at first because you're like, wait a minute. And you click on it and you're like, oh, I don't know this person. But I think if you're just honest and you're like, hi, this is who I am, it, it's keep it simple. I'm all about just keeping it simple. I don't like anything too elaborate, like in terms of, you know, those email outreach. Mm, and then Savannah asks, who are the best people to reach out to behind the magazine slash in the industry? Is it just a photo editor or are there other relevant, relevant people to connect with? Um, I would say photo editors and art directors and even designers sometimes. Um, art directors also are looking at photography. Um, some magazines and, and businesses, it could be they may not have a photo person, they just have an art director and an art director is doing everything. Thank you. Um, and then Hana asks in the chat, well, how do you maintain relationships with editors once you have made them? Um, you know, you kind of touched on it with like sending email updates, um, but are there other ways, you know, maybe following on social or other ways to, you know, maintain that relationship? Oh yeah, I follow I follow people on social media. I've I've had photographers reach out to me on social. They'll DM me. I've seen pe some people don't like DMs, and some people do. But I've had people reach out to me. I've had conversations with, you know, photographers. If I like their work, I'm like, hey, you know, I like what you've done. You know, or I may comment on their photo or like their photo. Um, I follow a lot of people that you know. I wish I could work with everyone. I, but, you know, obviously um, it's hard to work with everyone, but um, yeah, I think following people on social me media is probably a good step, uh, a good beginning in doing that. Um, Pre-pandemic, it was maybe if you were from out of town and you were in New York or LA, you're like, I'm in town, can I take you out for coffee so we can just talk and you can make that connection. Thank you. Um, and then one thing I, you know, 
get a lot of questions about is portfolio portfolios. Um, you mentioned, you know, you often do portfolio reviews. I'm pulling up your site because I love it. Um, and so when you are looking at someone's site, like what do you look for? Um, how can someone make it easy for you? Because I'm sure you're often looking at a lot of different sites all the time. You know, what can people do to stand out with their site? Um, it should be easy to navigate. Um, I've seen sites where it's like, you know, you're looking, where's the scroll button or how do I make something bigger? Um, I personally like thumbnails, but not, a, I, I, I've seen sites that don't have dumb thumbnails. Um, but if you can scroll it easy, like either whether it's a vertical or horizontal scroll, then um, that makes it easy. Um, it also should have your contact. I hate forms. I hate forms when you just have to contact a photographer just on their form. It should have their email address as well. You know, some people don't want to put your phone number. I get it. That's fine. But you should have an email address as well. Because imagine you're, um, I'm working for the New York Times or Washington Post and I'm, I contact you and I have to go through the form and I have a job that you know. Oops, sorry that needs to be fulfilled right away you could have lost that job because you didn't have an email i hear that time and time again and yet people still have that form i totally understand and i i know like sometimes <laughs> i'm i won't fill out a form and i know other people like i don't fill out forms you don't have your email address. You're, if you're a photographer and you're in the business of photography, you should have your email address there. And then would you recommend, you know, if someone does, you know, various different like niches and whatnot to have it broken up like this, like you do? Um, I've seen it where it's like someone will just have an overview and that's fine. Um, I've seen categories. I like categories because you can go to what you're looking for. But then, yeah, and I've heard people say, you know, other um, editors, photo editors, and even um, art producers and buyers say, oh, I don't like sections, like just have an overview. You kind of have to call what works best for you, but just make it so that it's easy to navigate. Um, along the same lines, Yenny asks, you know, I'm a graphic designer and a photographer. I blend in both fields in one website. Would sharing both your skills in one site, you know, affect the way you get chosen for a job? Um, it could be. I don't think so, because I know a lot of people have both skills or they, you know, there's, I've seen it where you could, you could even do your graphic design is one category, or you can go have like a home um, a home page, and then when you click on the home page, there's like a section that says photography, and one that says graphic design, and then you click on the section that you want, and then go into the portfolio. Thank you so much, um, Shelby. As uh, let me go back to your question, Shelby. What advice do you have for navigating gatekeepers in the industry? And a lighter question, what is a quote you live by and why? Ooh, <laughs> a quote I live by. I'm, okay, <laughs> it's be nice to everyone. And I say that because everyone that you meet, whether it's your peers, a photographer I hire, a photo assistant, everyone comes full circle. So it's like, if I'm nasty to someone, that person that could hire me for another job no, has seen that, even though they may have not been in a hiring position. And, you know, you remember things like, oh, I don't want to work that person. He's mean to his, he or she's mean to his, um, her assistants, or that person was really mean to me and nasty to me for no reason. So like you remember these things It's always just be nice. We work in a position, we work in a kind of industry that's really just about networking. And I recommend people all the time to other people in um, positions to hire. So um, whether you're a photo assistant, a photographer, a stylist, makeup artist, it's just like, you have to be nice to everyone. 
thank you so much for that. I'm going to turn to another question from the chat. Um, before I go to the emailed questions, Jay Pamela asks, do magazines have a range when it comes to rates to license a photograph? Are rates established according to categories, i.e. sports, fashion, or beauty? Rates are probably standardized, not standardized, they're by publication. So each publication just has the rates that they're, they, that they pay. And, and there are different organizations out there that will help photographers like ASMP, APA, um, that will have like, um, cat there's, um, what do you call it? Um, oh, I can't think of the word. Um, it's basically, there's different kind of not categories, like calculators that will say, oh, if your magazine is like X amount of circulation, the cost should be this, but it was really by magazine and publication. Um, it's also by size of imagery. So like if I buy a full page image versus a half page versus a quarter page and a, you know, it goes down from there. Amazing. I'm going to keep asking, just firing away while you're in the hot seat. Um, Valerie asks, what do you like to work on personally outside of work? Oh, um, doing, I wish I was shooting more, but you know, like just for my own self, like sometimes when I was working full time, it's just like, I don't want to look at my own stuff. Um, I think when I went freelance again, I started just building, working my own art practice. And that's how the Macy's thing came along. Like just really doing things that I like. I want to do more. Um, I love collaging and I love photo collage. So I started working on that for myself. I haven't shown anyone anything, but it's really just working on myself. I used to do, I had a variety of different creative. I used to sew. And I was into that for a long time. I was like, I would come home from work and I would sell for hours, like making stuff. Like I started, I wasn't really good at first. And then I started, it's like, I have to get good at this. And then, you know, following and learning how to follow a pattern. And then I got into quilting um, and really, really enjoyed that. I love textiles and interior design um, and looking at those kind of things. Amazing. I love that. Um, Savannah asks, what's a mistake you've made uh, that you have learned from the most? Probably, well, I mean, we all make mistakes. Um, no one's perfect, unfortunately. It's probably just not even believing in myself earlier and really pushing myself because I think sometimes as um, women, we try to, we don't think, oh, I should, I deserve this, or, you know, I am this, like, you have to believe it, like, okay, I'm a photo editor, it's like, well, am I really a photo editor, I only did one project when I was first starting out, and it's like, no, you are a photo editor, you have to say it and believe it, and, you know, men have no problem doing that, so, like, we need to embrace that and really do that ourselves, so it's really, yeah, just not pushing myself. I think I pushed myself, but I, not hard. Cause I was always like, oh, you know, maybe what if they don't like me or what if I don't know what I'm doing? But you know, you, you have to believe in yourself. That's a good point. And along those same lines, um, Aspen asks, how do you balance being a woman and then being nice on set without being a pushover? Um, uh, definitely not a pushover and you can be, I think it is definitely a balance, but what I remember being on set and, um, we were pressed for time and I was trying to speed everyone along and the makeup artist said to me, he's like, oh, here comes Tracy. She does that smile. Like it's like you smile and you're like, but you better get moving quickly now. Like you have 10 minutes and she's like, but you do it with such a like pleasant way. <laughs> and not everyone does that. I don't think you have to be nasty and yell at someone, but 
I need to get my point across. Like, no, you don't have time for this. We got to move on. <laughs> and sometimes it's just saying matter of factly. <laughs> I love that. Um, Jessica Brooks um, has a question. Um, I think, okay, so I see three questions actually. I'll just ask two of them. How can someone break into the industry of visual you know, directing and becoming a creative producer if you have any like thoughts on that? I guess it's really, <laughs> especially in production, um, if you st start, um, reach out to production agencies, maybe assist and, um, you know, see if they have any openings for like a PA. Usually most people in production um, either started out as a production assistant and, you know, work their way up. So that's a way to kind of, especially in directing and video, um, that's a good way to start out. And then another question from Jessica, do you have any books or magazines or websites you recommend, um, I guess, for like learning? From learn, well, I guess photography. I look at books that I look at are more inspirational books like, um, and then, you know, I don't have any of my books here. I'm at my sister's house in Atlanta right now, kind of, um, uh, hiding away so everything's in my apartment but um if you're gonna learn photography it's like now everything's on you know you I, mean, I know people learn like lighting and stuff from youtube just googling youtube stuff to learn different techniques looking at photographers that they like and following them and also um like just anything that inspires you. So I love um, textiles. So, and I have like this book from, from years ago. I don't know if anyone's familiar with um, the quilts of G's Ben. They were like the Gullah community. And these women did um, these amazing, they look like fine art quilts, but they were just doing it as a part of their everyday lives. And I have that book and I love it because it's colorful, it's inspirational, just hearing the stories. Um, I like stuff like that. I look at um, kind of indie, I like ID Magazine, British Vogue, like, because I think they take a little more chances in the types of photography that they produce than what some of the American publications um, put out there. So I'm looking at stuff like that. I'm looking at Instagram. Um, I look at feature shoot is a, I love feature shoot because there's a lot of different types of photography that they highlight and um, bring stories that I didn't know to light. Um, National Geographic does the same, New York Times, their uh, photo lens. Um, I look at a bunch of different things. I, I would say feature shoot, a photo editor is another um, blog, photo blog that highlights photography. Um, I look at them, I'm trying to think. There's probably a few more. Those are the ones that come to mind though. Thank you so much. Um, I see another question in chat from Shamika. Do you put together a vision board for yourself to reference before and during a shoot? Um, there's always, I always work off a mood board. It's usually, um, how we get a concept approved anyway. So you have, um, so and, and that everyone's on the same page. So if say it's a fashion shoot and the fashion is 70s fashion. So there's a mood board of like kind of the clothes that will, the stylist will be getting. We put a mood board of what kind of things we want for the set. And then um, sometimes that's taking from like just stuff we see, references, and then that is sent to everyone. It's sent to everyone on the team, the hairstylist, the makeup stylist, the prop stylist, so that everyone's on the same board. And then we'll have a creative call and we talk it through because the, like the prop stylist will have an idea, the, you know, the makeup um, artist will have an idea of makeup that we didn't think about. Um, and 
everyone is really, I think photography is truly a collaborative, um, a, a, it's a collaboration because you're working with so many different creatives with different points of view and you bring that together with one kind of, the photographer is like the director, he's pulling it all together or she, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Savannah asks, how long do you tend to plan a project for and do you do a test shoot or have to get it right the first time? Um, projects can come together in a day and you can have weeks or a month. It really depends on um, how far. I've had shoots come together literally in hours. You know, I was on one set once years ago where um, we're wrapping up, we're shooting some portraits. And then I get a call from my boss and she's like, we have to shoot a portrait of this woman tomorrow. And that it was maybe seven o'clock at night, we're wrapping up, I was going to dinner with the crew. And she's like, it's seven o'clock at night. I have, that means I have a shoot tomorrow morning at like, I have to be there at nine o'clock. I have nothing planned. And then literally I looked at the photographer I was with. I said, are you busy tomorrow? He's like, no, I'm free. I'm like, good, you have another job. Um, I said to the, I called the, the, make, the makeup artist had left and I just called some makeup artists I knew. And it's like, are you available? Until the first, the first person was available, got the job and things like that happen. Um, then there's things where you have like, you know, a week or, you know, two weeks, three weeks, sometimes a month of planning um, because it's maybe you're getting on a celebrity schedule and it's just, skip, you know, these are the dates we're gonna give you, we're on your schedule. And then we're like, well, we have all this time, let's start planning it. So I'm not waiting to the last minute to do everything. I like planning. I love if we have more time, but a lot of times you don't. I'd say on average, it could be a week to two weeks for it, like magazine editorials. Newspapers could be like day, a day or two. Thank you so much. Um, when it, you already mentioned a lot of great you know, tips and suggestions for how to you know, get your eyes in front of an editor to be considered for one day if you wanna shoot for a cover or magazine or whatever the case may be. Um, if you have ideas that you wanna to pitch to a magazine, is it like the same process? And then when it comes to like pitching, you know, an idea or whatever, a story, you know, how does one, I guess, protect their ideas with their pitch? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, each newspaper and magazine, again, is going to be different on how they accept pitches. So it's, I would start out reaching out to someone and say, how do you accept pitches? It may even have it on their web website who to send it to. Um, it, it, I've seen pitches where, you know, the photographer's logo is just made sure it's over the images because no one should be using your images without your permission anyway. And you wanna believe that people are honest and truthful, but you know, sometimes, you know, people aren't and they're like, oh, that's a great idea. And then, take the idea and run off with it. Um, I always would put a line in there, this is proprietary, you know, it's um, privileged and confidential, like any type of legalized, legalese words that you can add at the end of your pitch to make sure that, you know, if you take this idea, I'm gonna come after you. <laughs> Cause it's one thing, you know, sometimes as creatives, we all have this, we, we can have the same ideas but it's how it's executed that's kind of proprietary. So that's what you want to hold on to, like keeping that, um, making sure that, you know, that's protected. Thank you so much. Um, again, we're almost out of time, you all. So if you have any burning questions, now is the time to drop it in the chat. We will just power through as many as we can. We're almost out of time. So again, if you have any Bernie questions for Tracy, please do drop it in the chat. Now is the time to ask. Um, Tracy, I have another question for you. Um, so you mentioned a little bit about like what we can do and networking and things like that. Um, as you know, as a black woman, I guess it's like, 
how do you even like stay encouraged in a sense being in this industry that's still very white male dominated um you are someone who wears so many different hats you know how do you do that with such you know i guess grace and ownership of that you know does that just take years of experience in in order to you know be that confident if that makes sense um Oh yeah, I probably wasn't this confident when I was like 25 years old. And it just it comes with, you know, being com more comfortable in my own skin and comfortable in my abilities and knowing, you know, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Um, I think also it's like leaning on my friends and, and really having a really core support system that I can, you know, rely on people like they I know they got my back and you know no matter what they're going to be there for me and it's also um like and, and when I say networking it's like you know reaching out to people it's you know it could be joining an organization it could be like with the black woman community uh, black women photography community you already have now like a built-in network of people that you can reach out to for advice, for um, for just even support. So it's like, it's building that community, if that makes sense. No, it does. Thank you so much. Um, we have a question from Aspen. Do magazines work with unrepped photographers versus repped photographers? Oh, all the, I, uh, not a lot of the photographers that I've worked with did not have reps. Um, really, I don't think you need a rep to, you know, have necessarily have a career. Um, a rep is kind of, uh, especially for editorial, like editorial rates are not significant. They're, they're, you know, you have to shoot a lot of editorial to make a, you know, a really good living off of it. But, a, you know, a rep may be better will help you get some commercial jobs. But even then, I know a lot of people who are getting commercial jobs and don't have reps. Sometimes it really just depends on what you're looking for in getting a rep. But, you know, I work with a lot of unrep photographers. It's really about the talent and, um, you know, what they can deliver. Thank you. Um, there's about three more questions we'll try to power through. Chantelle asks, do you feel there, do you feel there is still a lot of politics involved in what magazines you shoot for, especially now um, since magazines don't sell as much? In terms of, um, I think any kind of business there's politics involved, no matter what field you're in. Um, you know, my sister's a business person. She's total opposite of me. And when she would hear my stories, you know, if I'm frustrated on something or whatever I'm going through, she's like, it's the same thing in the business world. Like, no matter what you are in, there's some type of politics of, you know, somebody wants this, someone, you know, else wants this. So it's really just navigating that and um, being sure on what you can, being sure just, um, yeah, magazines are, you know, you, you have these magazines now that are not even doing 12 issues a year, they're doing 10, they're doing five, six, they're kind of cutting down on the number of issues they're doing, which also means they're doing less photography. And then even when the issues that they are doing, they may be doing less photographies because budget is um, cut. So it's, some people, some magazines are just online now. So it's, it, it's this kind of, um, you know, I guess cat and mouse, like what, what's, you're, you're always chasing your tail, I guess, not, not in a bad way, but you're just chasing that, that job and you're chasing um, the dream, but I would never give up on it because there's so many, as I said earlier, there's so many different avenues you can do. There's like now like a lot of online publications. There's a on, like online portals that, you know, you can be part of. There's fine art photography. There's, there's just so much out there and not everyone has the same interests. Like some, you know, not everyone wants to be like, a commercial shooter you just I love shooting you know 
portraits of people and families and making people happy because when they see those photos, they're like you're bringing joy to someone's life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, two last questions. Uh, Brie asks, as a photographer, after doing a test shoot, who has the final say over the images, photographer, model, agency, or hair, makeup, et cetera? Um, well, I think it really depends on how you reached out to everyone and what that agreement was. So to me, as a test shoot, it's the photographer because ultimately you get the images, but then, um, yeah, I would think it's the photographer. I really would think it's the photographer, but maybe you might have, you know, several selects or something. Um, it's not just one, you may give a, like a range of images. Thank you so much. Um, and then one last question for you, Tracy. Um, I guess it's like, you know, you mentioned a lot of already great tips and advice. Um, is there anything that you think we as, you know, photographers, as people in this industry should be doing or learning that we aren't necessarily like, you know, what do you feel like is missing when a photographer reaches out or, you know, you mentioned like personal projects, you'd love to see more of that. Um, but are there any other things that you love to see from us? Um, I, I just like to see good work. I love photography. I love to see, um, I, I just want to see good work and whatever that work is, whether it's fashion, beauty, still life, like I love it all. You know, I love like the journal, photojournalism and I always would get, um, I, I just love it all. So I think if you keep doing your craft and building up, I love to see evolution also. So I've met with photographers really early in their career who were kind of not sure the work wasn't really strong and as they did the steps they needed to do to really build up their portfolio and you see that progression it's like oh it's like having a baby and you see them grow and like oh wow they're doing this now and they're doing that like I love that that's amazing I can only imagine like my mom says that as a former teacher uh she says that all the time like she loves when uh um students reach out to her and you know keep them uh updated um okay i actually see one last question i'm sorry i'm just gonna ask it real quick and then we will have to wrap up uh dominique asks what is good work for you is it creativity impact or technique or all of the above it's probably all the above because photography when it comes out it's a technical skill so you have to have the technical ability to to do it so even if you're shooting natural light portraits you're outdoors what happens when it rains and it gets overcast or it, the clouds just get dark how are you going to still shoot that and make it look good like you have to know lighting you have to know um um the technical aspects of it but it's also like, it's an art form. So you have to have a really good eye and a conceptual eye. Like I love to see things that um, different ways people see because some, I, I won't, I may not see it that way. And you're like, I didn't see that. How did you see that? Like it's, I, I always get amazed by that. Thank you so much, Tracy. Um, truly, truly, truly cannot thank you enough for your time and your energy and your expertise. Um, I've dropped in the chat at Tracy's site and her email is listed in the contact. It's not just the form. So if you'd like to stay in touch. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? No, I said stay in touch. I'd love to see like just what people are doing and um, the work that they're producing. So my email's in the... Um, in my contact so thank you thank you so much tracy and thank you everyone for tuning in um and i hope you all do reach out to tracy um and again i shared her conversation with the lupe in the chat as well that goes into more of her experience as a photo director thank you everyone thank you bye you all bye